Yeah, perfect timing. Chris finally was able to join in. Uh, we seem to like always have a bit of a, a problem whenever people are trying to join in uh, the conversation. But Google's fault. Google's fault. Blame them. Um, everybody, this is Chris. He is one of the. If I correct me if I'm wrong, you're the original one of the original designers for the James Pond series. Um, yep. Chris, you want to go ahead and tell us what you're trying to do with the the series, and uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, well, um, there's a new Kickstarter campaign. It's, um, I think it's going to be out on Friday. It's going to be actually open. Um, so I was asked to join this. Cause I, it's, it isn't actually my IP. Um, I worked on the original game. I was designer and programmer and did graphics too, actually, on the first three James Pond games. Um, but Gameware is a company that owns the IP these days. And they asked me if, they want, if I wanted to be part of this campaign to uh, create a brand new game. And um, I had to think about it because... Uh, I haven't loved everything that, that's happened with uh, James Pond over the years. Um, I think he hasn't really moved on much since uh, the early 90s. Um, but they seem to really want to do a brand new game and really try and do something interesting with the character in that. So, uh, sure, why not? Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, um, do you, as far as some of the details are going with the game itself, um, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about what, um, what can we expect for some of the perks? Because a lot of these games offer some great perks for donating. Mm -hmm. Do, are you aware of some of the perks that are going to be available whenever people donate? Uh, yeah, I mean that's a list that's kind of uh, being finalized right now actually. Um, uh, there's a guy called um, JP that's working on that. Um, uh, sorry, PJ. Sorry, <laughs> JP. Uh, PJ's, um, you haven't get the list right now. Um, there's, there's a mixture of things. There's obviously there's, there's um, digital items, things in game, uh, things that you can't unlock in game that uh, are going to be like special features for people that, that are able to back us. Uh, and then there are physical items, you know, things like T-shirts and uh, figurines, that kind of thing, that uh, are also there for, you know, some of the sort of higher tier um, options for if people want to back, back the project. So we're trying to make a good range of things, basically, so that every, everybody's going to get something kind of cool. If, they, if, if they're interested in Pond and remember Pond from back in the day, then there's going to be a lot of things in there that, that will be fun things to have and uh, things that, you know, have never been available before. It's... um. I have some some very fond memories of these games. I mean, whenever we were speaking uh, emails back and forth trying to get you on the show, I, I said that I was a, a big James Pond fan. But I mean, as you can tell, these are these are it right here. Yeah, he's um, the James Pond guy. Yep, <laughs> that's my jam. Um, I have the cases to these too, but I keep the way I keep my Sega games uh, displayed. I have a, one of the uh, Sega display racks, and you can slide the cartridges in there. So my cartridges and my my cases are in separate areas. But uh, one of the things Kevin and I were discussing um, prior to you coming on was some of the the game remakes um, for these games. Uh, and mm -hmm. I had suggested why not release some of these games in a cartridge based form mm -hmm. um, to allow us to play on some of the old ones. I mean, even if it's just for looks, I think that'd be really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, because Whenever you are revamping some of these series, you are really trying to touch on people's uh, nostalgic feelings towards this game series. Yeah. So by re-releasing some of these games, obviously on your Android and your iOS and uh, whatever the current generation consoles are, allowing some of these games to be able to put on these would be a really cool option right there. I think that would be uh, that would be very cool. Um, mm -hmm. Is there? Tell us a little bit about your favorite parts or game that you worked on in the James Pond series. Sure. Just to kind of address the thing you were saying before that, though, um, I don't think that's the plan we necessarily have right in mind of you know, re-releasing the kind of the old games, because certainly Robocod's been out there on, say, just about every platform uh, oh, yeah. you think of. Um, but the, the way the campaign is structured and that, we're, we're trying to make it very open so that people can kind of let us know what they want. You know, there's a Facebook page that's, that's open right now, and people are very welcome to go on there and, and make suggestions as to what they'd like to see. And it's one of those things where the kind of things that people want are the kind of things that we want to kind of take into consideration. Um, you know, what platforms, and, and even, you know, if, if, there's, if it's possible to include kind of old versions, that's something that could be, could be open for, for consideration, absolutely. Yeah, that's... that's um, um, go ahead, sorry. So you, so you asked me as well, you know, what, what, what um, like kind of favorite kind of um, parts of this series I, I had? Uh, yeah. I'm always kind of pretty crappy with these kind of questions. I don't really have <laughs> specific kind of recollections about uh, things because actually I kind of worked on, on the first two games. The first one was about five months. The second one was about nine months. So a pretty short time, uh, period of time compared to modern development. And during those times, there were so many long hours in that that it was a bit of a blur. Um, but I think for me, the, the big thing about working on those games back in those days was 
it was so kind of like liberating. You, you could just work on, on, you could just, you know, add whatever ideas you thought of, whatever crazy ideas you had, you could just kind of throw them in there. Nobody was saying, oh, what about this? We need to get a focus group to see if that works, blah, blah, blah. There was none of that. It was just, um, you just made what you, what you felt like. And I think the games are what they are because of that. You know, all the kind of crazy ideas I had late at night. Um, yeah. You know, about, you know, this... London Master spits out grannies, things like that. You just put them in there, you know, I don't have to run it by anybody, assuming it's kind of yeah. fun. It feels a lot, um, it seems to me like it, it would feel a lot less serious. Because back right. then, I mean, um, gaming wasn't taken as serious. You don't have a new Call of Duty every year. You know, we have to get, you know, we have to add, you know, the, our, our people want more blood. You know, it's, yeah. fo- like you said, focus group this, focus group that. You know, you're just creating a game because it was fun, and it was something that was, um, you know, it wasn't just a, hey, i got to show up and do the job today. you got to right. do work for the corporate man. And literally um, there were, like, you know, three, three or four of us working on the team, like, like at Max, for the first two games. It grew a little bit for the third one. And when we were working on James Bond 3 for the Genesis, that was a, definitely a bigger project. It's too big, probably, because it took a bit longer than it should have done. Um, but, yeah, it was such a small team and, and such a kind of quick kind of turnaround on any ideas we wanted to, to put in there. Yeah. And like you say, there was no formula. These days, everything is so formulaic and, you know... Every game is just whatever was successful last year, and maybe add a tiny bit more and make it a bit gorier. A few more neck stabs, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so much more fun when it was just cartoony and abstract, and, and anything anything goes, kind of thing. Yeah, like, like I think James Pond should be blue. Why? Why? Why is he orange? Like that's the <laughs> kind of. <laughs> like, yeah, if you were trying to make that game now, that's the kind of crap that you'd be hearing all day. It doesn't long. look very realistic. Can you add <laughs> more gills? We need more lens flare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, um, with with some of these uh, these games that are getting reboots. Or is there um, anything that you're looking forward to, um, you know, going through some of these games and doing that? Is there any that you have looked forward to that have gotten a reboot, like any of the mm-hmm. newer games? I don't know. I mean, I've I've kind of played games through through the years, kind of thing. It's, um, I'm not not maybe quite as avidly as you guys. Um, I've always, I guess, been more kind of drawn to the kind of making games and playing games, and have also always been also drawn to the kind of more kind of cutting edge technology. So as things have moved on, for the main part, I've been kind of keen to see the new new games and new platforms and things. Um, not necessarily true now that, as you say, everything seems so kind of stagnant and and repetitive, but. Uh, you know, I've been a big fan of games like just recently The Last of Us from Naughty Dog. I've been a huge fan of their games over the years. They just do, do amazing work. Um, always interested to see what they do next. In terms of remakes of old games, though, um, I don't know, really. I haven't really got a particular one in mind. Um, I can think of. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not, not really t- quite so up on, on the remake scene, really. It's okay. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of them going out there. I mean, it's, it's the current trend right now is to get a lot of these games kick-started. <laughs> oh, except uh, one I can Sorry, uh, Elite, of course. I mean, I was certainly a huge fan of Elite back when I was a kid, just like uh, everyone else from our era. Um, and, yeah, looking forward to see what those guys do with that one. Um, nice. Yeah. Well, one thing I was curious about that, uh, that you mentioned was that you really honestly didn't have much interest in doing a remake of James Pond until they said something that made you want to continue. Right. Did they say something or show you something? I'm just curious. What it was it that made you say, you know what, this is a great idea now? I guess I'm more open to it now than I would have been a few years back because um, I'm an indie, ve- indie developer now, just like uh, every other man and his dog. And you obviously are always interested in something that, that if you can work on something that you know people might want to buy, you know, might want to actually play, then that's got to be a good thing, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And so for me, it was kind of like if there's a campaign and if enough people are there that actually want this thing, then of course, why wouldn't I want to work on it again? Because it was great fun back then, and I think we can have great fun with it now, and we can make something really cool now. But, you know, I, th- I think that's the thing for me, is kind of knowing that it's something people want, and if, if the campaign fails, then, okay, that's a shame, but, you know, that's mm-hmm. that's the reflection of the time, and I wouldn't want to go ahead and make it if, if, if it wasn't going to actually be something that people wanted. Well, yeah. I can tell you that you will be getting some of my money. <laughs> I've been a fan of this series, so why not go ahead and try to uh, encourage another game out there? Because, like you said, it, it, there has been renditions on pretty much everything. I mean, the last one that I picked up was for Game Boy Advance, which was basically mm-hmm. uh, a remake of uh, was it the Super NES version of it, if right. I remember correctly. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, we we need some we need some fresh blood into it. What do you um want to see in the upcoming game that you really want to push in there as a developer? I mean, the big thing for me is I'm I'm really not the business guy, so it's like I don't want to do this just for the sake of it. And I only say I want to do this if if we've got the opportunity to do something that's that can be kind of fun and new and bring something to the to the franchise that isn't just rehashing what we did before. So yeah. that's definitely something that's important to me is to try and look for kind of like new things. And James Bond was always kind of so crazy anyway, so I think that we, we can come up with some new crazy ideas that, that fit with that world and kind of recapture some of the qualities that we had in the original games. Um, I think we would probably do some things so we, we would kind of have some little kind of nods to what we did before. You know, maybe we would take elements of the first three games and incorporate maybe those into power-ups and, and maybe character modes that we would have in, in a new game. But we would certainly be looking for new things to do as well. Um, whether we would kind of make it 3D, um, I'm always tempted to because, I, uh, as I've mentioned, I kind of tend to like, I like technology and I like kind of like being a little bit kind of forward-looking in, in things that I'm doing, being ambitious. I mean, the thing I've been working on myself for the last couple of years is, is definitely way too ambitious, but um, it's been a lot of fun doing that. And that's the kind of way I kind of prefer to do things. I, I prefer not to just totally just rehash you know, what I've done before and what's been done before. I like to try and look for new things. But I think with James Pond, we'll definitely try and mix in a lot of what was there before and what people liked about it, you know, back in the early 90s, and try and bring it all up to date and uh, use some of the kind of cool tools and cool technologies that we've got now to try and um, just take it in any direction, really, and, and find, um, you know, kind of wacky things we can do with the character that just fit with the, the modern kind of platform in a, in, in a cool way. Nice. Uh one thing I was curious about, Dustin step, stepped away for a little bit, but uh, you said that you were more of a game maker and that was a little bit more of your passion. One right. thing I was kind of curious about is through the years, because, I mean, you've been around for a while, obviously. I mean, you've worked on the Genesis, all that. Of yeah. all the things you've worked on, what was the thing that got you the most excited and just got you just really happy to be working on that game day after day? Mm -hmm. I mean, James Pond was, was definitely awesome in the day, but even beating that was probably medieval when, when I worked on that. Um, you know, I was kind of nice. team medieval. It was my idea, and I kind of brought together the team. There were about 11 of us working on it in the core team. And for all of us, it was like the first time we'd worked on a 3D game. And that was just an era where that was such a kind of new and novel thing. You know, this, this platform came along in the form of the PlayStation, which made it possible to do 3D games really for the first time, in a kind of mainstream way anyway. Obviously, PC had been, been doing 3D for a while, but... That was still fairly niche back then. So yeah, just being and having the opportunity, particularly because we were we were so lucky to get to end up kind of signing that game to Sony, and uh, working on PlayStation, like working on one of those, those, those first sort of 3D games for me was really a special experience. And we had a really close knit team, and it was just a really fun, cool experience, really. And nice. you know, first time we we also transitioned there from being a little company, um, which was Millennium, with the guys that you know we actually made uh, James Pond with. And we were bought by Sony, so that was a, was a real like change in, in the way we were used to working. And oh, I bet. It's a really exciting time to, to work um, for Sony as well, because it was such a kind of a new venture for them as well, kind of like taking their first steps with PlayStation. Oh, so yeah, yeah. That was the time that, um, you know, even more than Pond, and Pond was awesome, but that was the one that probably would stand out for me. Nice. Uh, one thing I'm also curious about is uh, I'm sure there's some stuff you can't talk about, but... What what kind of projects besides James Pond are you actually working on right now? Good question. Right now. That was gonna, that's what I was going to ask. Well, you can get a little hint of that if you go to my uh, my webpage. Um, my wife and I set up a little company a couple of years back called Spoon Size Entertainment. And if you go to spoonsize.com, uh, we did a little pitch video last year because we were kind of looking for um, some publisher support. Things have moved on quite a bit since then, but the, the game itself is kind of fundamentally the kind of thing that you can see when you go there, really, if you look at the, the game Ice Giant. Um, there you go. So it's it's a game, like I mentioned earlier, I like doing things that are a bit different, and for two people to, to be making it, this is definitely way too ambitious a game for us, but it's, like I say, a challenge. I like challenges. Um, the game itself is kind of like set in space. You you control this little kind of astronaut guy, and you have these moons to look after, and you're kind of flying around the moons with a, with a jetpack. And it's, there's a few games that have done this, but it's kind of taking the whole spherical world thing um, in a direction I don't think anyone's really, really done with it yet, in that you've, you've got kind of things like underground caverns and um, that full freedom just to fly, fly around these places. 
in a kind of quite an open world sandboxy kind of environment. So yeah, you can see the, the screenshots there maybe. Um, so it's it's a quite a big game. So yeah, we've been working on it for um, about not quite two and a half years, but coming up to that. So it's probably way longer than we should be spending for this kind of game. But we, we definitely hope that it's going to be something quite special when it's done. And it also kind of has um, a lot of elements of the kind of humor that have always been important to me, like Medieval and Robocard and that. They've always been very kind of quirky games. There's always been like a, a humorous thread there. And this is very much the case with, with this game as well. There's quite a lot of um, kind of dark humor in it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. But at the same time, it's kind of like trying to build a world that's kind of fairly believable and has kind of me like mechanisms that um, interrelate with each other and it has a kind of a believability to the, the way that things interact that uh, I think is, is cool. Nice. Very cool, man. Um, well, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. I mean, is there any oh. is there anything else you want to push? Or, I mean, is there any... Uh, I mean, where, where can they find you and get a hold of you or, or, or the project that you're um, hopefully be working on in the future, James Pond? Um, well, James Pond stuff, uh, the best thing to do there is, is go to the Facebook page, which I think is James Pond Games with an S on the end. Um, that's the Facebook page for this particular campaign. Um, I know um, the PJ that's organizing the campaign would, would love to, to see people coming along there, giving us any opinions on things that you'd like to see in the game. And um, obviously, if you're able to support us, that would be fantastic, and obviously take it one step closer to being a reality. Um, and yeah, it, even if you can't support us, anyone that's that's been a, a fan of James Pond over the years, I'd you know just love to say thank you very much for your support, and uh, I'm very glad to have uh, you know been able to make something that, that you've enjoyed. Awesome! Thank you very much uh, for coming on the show. Make sure you yes, check out his. You. No problem. Make sure you check out his uh, Facebook page. And go to his website, SpoonSize.com, and uh, tell him we sent you. Tell you hello. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to stick around for a second, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show, and then um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit off the air, um, if we could. Um, remember, everybody, go to VideoGameRescue.com. Check out the latest videos that we're going to be doing. Kevin has the new Shmup Central bonus episode that's going to be coming out. Uh, and hopefully, uh, I will start doing some more videos as soon as my Indiegogo campaign is done. Uh, remember, one week left to donate to that and help me open up my first retail location for uh, Video Game Rescue. Um, thank you for listening, and remember, bring an old friend back to life. See you next time. Adios.